Despite no formal Indian Ministry of Defense orders, U.S.-based Shield AI is pressing ahead, with localizing its VBAT VTOL drone through a technology transfer to JSW Group. The partnership will see Indian-made VBATs roll out by late 2026 or early 2027 from a Maharashtra plant, with production scaling to 200 units annually by 2028. Featuring Shield AI's HiveMind Autonomy Suite and 60% indigenous content, the venture aims to serve both domestic forces and export markets. Russia has proposed transferring technology for its KH-69 stealth subsonic cruise missile to equip India's Su-30 MKI fighters with local production possible via HAL or BDL. The 400km range KH-69, combat proven in Ukraine, offers low radar visibility and precision strikes, complementing India's heavier BrahMos A. If accepted, the deal could enhance IAF's deep strike options amid delays in indigenous ALCMs like DRDOs nearby and growing regional tensions along the LAC. India faces a surge in GPS spoofing and jamming along its western frontier, with over 465 disruptions since late 2023, impacting flights over Amritsar, Jammu and Srinagar. Experts warn of deliberate electronic warfare tactics, risking collisions and fuel inefficiencies. They urge rapid adoption of indigenous NAV-IC-based navigation, anti-spoofing sensors, and quantum-secure communications. The aviation lobby seeks rupees 5,000 crore in R&D funding, as India aims for spoof-proof skies by 2030, amid escalating hybrid threats. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research's National Aerospace Laboratories has achieved a key milestone in developing India's first high-altitude pseudo-satellite or HAPS, with a subscale prototype logging 10.5 hours at 25,000 feet. The solar-powered system will eventually loiter for weeks at 20 km altitude, providing ISR, 5G and 6G coverage, and disaster support. The full-scale 30M variant, due in 2026, targets a 2030 fleet of 5 to 10 units, giving India persistent surveillance and communication capabilities at a fraction of satellite costs. India and Indonesia are on the verge of sealing a historic BrahMos supersonic cruise missile agreement, pending final approval from Russia, India's joint partner in the project. The deal advanced during recent high-level visits would mark India's first major BrahMos export to Southeast Asia. For Indonesia, the acquisition promises a major boost to coastal defense amid Indo-Pacific tensions, while for India, it strengthens defense exports and regional strategic partnerships. Bengaluru-based Gridbots Technologies has successfully completed trials of its Katana Stab 127 remote-controlled weapon station, including deployments in Galwan Valley. The AI-driven system offers submicroradian precision, autonomous target tracking, and compatibility with 12.7mm heavy machine guns. Featuring fiber-optic gyroscope stabilization, GPU-based computing, and all-weather electro-optical sensors, the 100% indigenous platform enhances India's armored vehicles and border defenses, marking a major leap in the nation's AI-enabled, self-reliant combat technology ecosystem. Bharat Forge Limited has signed an MOU with UK-based Windracers Limited to localize and deploy the Windracers Ultra Heavy Lift UAV in India. Built from 90% aluminum and powered by twin 50-horsepower industrial engines the Ultra, can carry 150 kilograms payloads over 1,000 kilometers with 12-hour endurance. Designed for both military and civilian roles, it offers rugged STOL performance for defense logistics, ISR missions, and disaster relief in remote terrains. India is set for a 2026 landmark trial, uniting the Tejas MK1 and Su-30 MKI 
in a cooperative silent shooter engagement, advancing the IAF's networked warfare doctrine. After Tejas Jets successfully launched an Astra BVR missile in 2024, using radar guidance from a second Tejas, the next phase will pair the Tejas Stealthy Agility with the Su-30 MKI's upgraded BARS radar for long-range, low-emission kills. Powered by DRDO's RF-80 Datalink, this indigenous cooperative engagement capability will allow distributed targeting across platforms, fusing fleets into a single combat network, boosting survivability, strike range, and export appeal for Tejas, Astra packages. Soaring global fighter costs have made foreign imports untenable, pushing the Indian Air Force toward self-reliance through the Tejas MK2. With Rafaelis now exceeding $120 million per jet, and the MRFA tender ballooning past Rs 1.25 lakh crore, experts urge an upfront order of 200 Tejas MK2s to secure squadron strength and fiscal prudence. At roughly $70 to $80 million per unit, House Delta Wing MK2, featuring canards, GF-414 engines, and Dutom AESA radar, offers double the value of imports. Scaling house output to 24 to 30 jets yearly could ensure 42 squadrons by 2035, bridging the gap until AMCA arrives and reinforcing at Minerva Barrett in aerospace. The L and TBEL Consortium, leading India's fifth-generation advanced medium combat aircraft program, has announced Dynamatic Technologies Limited as an exclusive partner. The collaboration merges DTL's aerostructure expertise, built through decades of work with global aerospace OEMs, with Atlantis Engineering Excellence and Bell's Electronics Leadership. Together, they aim to strengthen India's indigenous aerospace ecosystem and accelerate AMCA's development. Atlantis Arun Ramchandani hailed DTL's inclusion as a leap in agility and precision, while DTL CEO Udayant Malhutra emphasized that the partnership marks a defining moment in building India's next-generation stealth fighter and advancing at Minerva Bharat in defense manufacturing. That's all for today. Hope you liked this video. Please like, share and subscribe for daily news updates. Thanks for watching.